This is a Visio 2010 players tutorial. Uh, it's an advanced one by putting some tips. It's basically a follow up to a previous video. This is where we left off in the tutorial. And um, first thing I wanted to go over here was the fact that these shapes, uh, even though only the line color is affected by the color of the layer. Now, of course, layers don't all have to have colors, but it just helps in some cases to keep things separate. But what happens is that the fill of all these shapes is by default is actually a background color. And if we go to fill and we see that um, there's a pattern. And if we go and set a pattern, we can do this, we just click a pattern on the menu and go to uh, say black. And then we can pick a so fairly solid color. And then you'll see that when we go and click OK on this, that all those solid color patterns have uh, taken up the color of the layer that the object is in. So um, within the limits of what you can do with the pattern, it's possible to actually have your fill be affected by the layer color. Next thing uh, I want to go over here is layer properties. Uh, here we see that you can turn layers on and off or over that. But there's a, both a visible and a checkbox for each one of them. And it's just a never ending source of frustration if you don't if you're not careful to whenever you turn off the visible, if you don't turn off the print. If you do one, not the other, uh, somewhere down the road you're going to have problems. You're going to print something, it doesn't come out right, you can't figure out why. It turns out that you have a layer that's visible but not printing, or vice versa. So that's an uh, important thing to miss. Now, another uh, possibility is the fact that um, objects can belong to multiple layers. Right now, we've just picked this thing in the orange layers. And uh, if we look through the layer menu and go to multiple layers, here we can see it shows in oranges. Let's say we put that in oranges and apples. Now, what you get is the color is black. And of course, now if, if all your layers are black, that won't tell you anything. But now, once you go and you start turning layers on and off, we get some strange things that happen. For instance, if we go here and turn off apples, notice visible and print, and apply that, now it shows up as the orange, although it's actually in the apples layer, but the apples layer is invisible right now. So uh, that can end up being very confusing. So my recommendation here is to stay away from having things in multiple layers, not a uh, Good thing if you want to stay reasonably sane. Next thing, a uh, possible source of uh, significant problems is uh, grouping. I'm going to add a few shapes here. And, uh, I'm just copying these. Now, one of the things that happens with uh, grouping is that if you group these objects and then choose to take that group and put it in a layer, say we put it in apples, that layer that now appears uh, as um, something uh, in that apples layer, even though it's a group. If we go and we turn apples off in terms of appearance, um, if I'm visible, you can see that they disappear. But one of the things that's confusing with the groups with the layer behavior is that if we go and put this in no layer, all the things that made up the group still have the layer properties that they took on when the group was assigned to the layer. So particularly if you're not using colors to separate the layers, very confusing. You think you just took all these things uh, out of the layer, but in fact, you didn't take them out. You just took the group out. You have to go back, ungroup, and take all the individual items out of the layer. 
So a little confusing there. Okay, one other possible source of challenges with layers is that in the layer properties, there's a checkbox for active. Okay, and when you check that active box, then anything you add, you can draw new, is automatically in that layer. So if I put oranges and active, okay, and then I go in here and I just draw a box, automatically it's in oranges. And that is fine, you know, for convenience, but the serious problem with that is that it's very easy to forget that you've set that. And, uh, and then you start adding things and you have no idea why they're in the layers that they're in, where they end up when you put them in, they're in a layer. You set them to another layer, now you've got something that's in multiple layers. That's a tough one. I'm going to avoid that one. And then one other uh, item is that if you, uh, each set of layers, all the layer definitions, is uh, just for that page. So if you go to a new page, you'll find that... Uh, you go to the layers menu, layer properties, no layers. So if you want to share layers between pages, you have to actually copy the layers between pages. One way to do that is to um, go and have an object on one of the pages that is in every layer. And then you copy it to the next page. It will uh, bring the layers. Objects copied from one page to the next bring the layers. But if you have something that's not showing, then you won't copy it to the next page because you won't select it. So um, if you want to copy all the layers that are in use, you have to make everything visible and copy it. And the other approach is to have something in every in every possible layer. So that would be, uh, I'm just going to go back here to our page too. So those are the basic tips. In the next video, we're going to cover uh, dealing with, um, when you start using a lot of layers and wiring diagrams and things like that, with the issue of um, layer sets. For further information, go to drinfrastructure.com.